Hello everybody, my name is Saim. I'm a streaming essay at AWS. Today I'll be discussing about Amazon MSK tier storage. In this session, I will uh, cover the key concepts and the use case of Apache Kafka, and I will provide some examples of recent innovation, and then we'll deep dive on MSK tier storage feature. Let's start by talking about Apache Kafka. So you may already know that Kafka is an open source distributed event streaming platform that's used by thousands of companies all around the world. The reason for its incredible growth in popularity is due to its uh, wide variety of use cases where Kafka is used as a major component. Kafka is incredibly useful for many different industries and use cases such as log monitoring, real-time threat detection, connected device monitoring, implementing microservice-based architecture, streaming ETL, messaging, and much more. Though Kafka is very popular, running Kafka is challenging in a self-managed environment. Kafka has many configuration options and uh, parameters that can affect its performance and the behavior, and managing these configuration can be very challenging. Not only that, ensuring high availability is critical for many Kafka deployment and downtime can be unacceptable in mission critical application. And ensuring high availability requires careful planning and implementation. Integrating Kafka with other systems and tools can be challenging as well. And you can avoid all those challenges by moving to a managed Kafka service on AWS. So when considering a managed Kafka service, there are three overreaching benefits that you can achieve. The first key benefit of managed Kafka service provides is that um, it can increase the efficiency of your Kafka environment by automating undifferentiated administrative tasks and removing the human error. With managed Kafka, you can realize benefits such as um, improved performance, scalability, durability, and much more. Second, by improving the efficiency of your Kafka environment, you are able to reduce the cost. For example, when it comes to scaling your cluster, if you have a spiky workload, instead of constantly over-provisioning your Kafka cluster for peak capacity, you can use Amazon MSK serverless for instant scaling. And finally, uh, with a managed service, you are freeing up your team resources to focus on um, innovating on behalf of your own customer. And the managed service I'm referring here is Amazon MSK. Amazon MSK is a fully managed Apache Kafka service. You get capability like automated provisioning, configuring your Kafka cluster. Um, you can also provide custom configuration based on your use case. The service is fully compatible with open source um, Apache Kafka. So migrating your Kafka workload to Amazon MSK is pretty easy. Amazon MSK always runs within a managed VPC and provide multiple authentication mechanism to uh, securely connect with Apache Kafka. With pay-as-you-go pricing, running Kafka on Amazon MSK is low as um, one thirteenth the cost of other managed service providers. Amazon MSK has two cluster types, provision mode and serverless. And with provision cluster type, you specify uh, how many brokers that you need, how much storage that you need, and also other Kafka configuration um, that you want to apply based on your use case. On the other hand, with serverless cluster type for Amazon MSK, um, it is easy for you to run Apache Kafka without having to manage or scale the cluster capacity. Amazon MSK serverless automatically provision and scale compute and storage resources. So you can use Apache Kafka on on-demand basis and MSK serverless offers uh, throughput based pricing. So uh, you pay for the data volume that you stream and retain and you don't need to worry about idle broker and storage capacity. And these are the core capability when you are using Amazon MSK. In terms of uh, compatibility and elasticity, as I mentioned earlier, the service is fully compatible with open source Apache Kafka and its toolset. You can apply custom configuration based on your use case. It uses 
uh, rolling version upgrade best practices uh, to maintain high availability uh, throughout the version upgrade. You can enable auto scaling for storage scaling. You can also do um, broker scaling vertically and horizontally. And for Kafka authentication, you can enable multiple authentication mechanism within the same cluster, including IAM, TLS, SASL, SCRAM. And Amazon MSK integrates with um, AWS Key Management Service to offer uh, server-side encryption. And by the way, Amazon MSK always encrypts your data at rest. And the cluster can be deployed across two or three availability zones. The service is a part of AWS compliance program. These include HIPAA, PCI, ISO, and SOC. Uh, with MSK Serverless, you can instantly scale and MSK Connect provides a managed Kafka Connect environment uh, to host open source Apache Kafka connectors. In addition, with MSK TR storage, you get virtually unlimited capacity for Kafka storage. Not only that, the service has integration with many other AWS services. Here's I just listed few. Um, for example, you can use AWS Database Migration Service or DMS for uh, change data capture from transactional database and send it to Amazon MSK. AWS Lambda and Kinesis Data Analytics for Apache Flink, Amazon Redshift, Amazon Athena has inbuilt integration to read data from Amazon MSK. AWS IoT Core can send IoT data to Amazon MSK. And for monitoring, security, deployment, and governance, the service has integration with Amazon CloudWatch, AWS IAM, AWS CloudFormation, AWS KMS, AWS Certificate Manager, and Glue Schema Registry. I also want to highlight some of the recent feature releases on AWS, which is related to Amazon MSK. We added Kafka 3.x version support, uh, FedRAM compliance and Athena connector for Amazon MSK. And um, when you are doing eSIM processing with AWS Lambda, uh, and AWS Lambda now support max batching window, um, which is a new feature um, that allows you to fine tune your Lambda invocation for cost optimization. So for example, with match batching window, uh, you can wait as long as 300 seconds to build a batch before you invoke the lam Lambda function. Previously, Lambda used to scale up consumer every 15 minutes. Now, uh, when you use Lambda as a Kafka consumer, it starts with one consumer and check the offset lag matrix every minute and scale up and down every three minutes. AWS Glue Streaming ETL added support for auto de decompression for uh, BZIP, ZZIP, Snappy, and many other compression type. And Glue Schema Registry added support for protobuf. Um, so with that now, Glue Schema Registry support Avro, Protobuf, and JSON Schema. Recently, MSK Serverless added support for 2400 leader partition on a single uh, serverless cluster, and previously it was 120 partitions per cluster. Finally, with uh, private DNS endpoint support in MSK Connect, you can configure connector to reference public and private domain names. As I mentioned earlier, Kafka is uh, popular uh, because it can handle both real-time and historical data. And that means um, you can use historic data to train machine learning models and use those models to make prediction in real-time. Also, you can easily recompute past results when the application logic changes. These use cases often require data to be stored for weeks, month, or even years. And Apache Kafka is well suited to handle them. For example, by configuring the retention policy, data can be retained in Kafka cluster uh, for as long as you need. Although retaining data in Kafka cluster has its own benefits such as uh, real-time data processing, um, it can also be expensive due to the tightly coupled nature of a storage and compute in the cluster. Scanning up a storage by adding more broker often lead to wastage of compute resources like CPU and the memory. Additionally, a large cluster with more node can result in increased operational complexity and longer recovery time 
when a broker fails. So to avoid such issue, you can move data to Amazon S3 for long-term access um, with cost-effective storage classes available in Amazon S3. However, this approach comes with its own set of challenges as well. You will need to build and maintain an architecture for data movement to a different data store. And additionally, uh, different data processing logic um, needs to be developed using different APIs for consuming data. For example, uh, Kafka APIs you, um, you're going to use for streaming data. Amazon S3 API you'll, you will be required for historic data. To overcome all those challenges and to retain data longer in Kafka, you can use MSK tier storage feature. And this feature offers a virtually unlimited and low cost storage tier for Amazon MSK, uh, making it simpler and more cost effective for you to build a streaming data application. It is a cost effective solution for running Kafka workload, which enable you to store data in Apache Kafka without worrying about limits. With MSK tier storage, you can effectively balance your performance and the cost. This frees you from making hard trade-off between supporting the data retention need of your application team and the operational complexity that comes with it. You can use the same code to process both real-time and historical data um, that can minimize the redundant workflow and can simplify your architecture. And the best part is there is no additional infrastructure to manage when you are using this feature, making it even easier to use. You can easily enable tier storage feature on Amazon MSK. To enable tier storage on your existing cluster, upgrade your MSK cluster to Kafka version 2.8.2. tiered, and then choose tier storage and EBS storage as your cluster storage mode. You can upgrade your cluster using MSK console and AWS CLI. After you enable tier storage on a cluster, you can choose individual topic on a cluster to enable tier storage on that specific topic using Kafka CLI. Um, here I have two examples of how you can do that. Um, so on the first example, I'm enabling tier storage on an um, existing Kafka topic with two hours local retention and seven days uh, tier storage retention. And on the second example, I'm creating a new topic um, enabling tier storage with two hours local retention and seven days tier storage retention. Now, I want to dive a bit more about how MSK tier storage works. But before I do that, let's take a look how Kafka stores data in disk and how data expires from Kafka. This concept is very important to understand for my next discussion. As you know, Kafka is a distributed system where it partitions the topic data across multiple brokers within the same cluster. Which means a topic can have multiple partitions and Kafka broker is split each partition into segment. Each segment is stored in a single data file on the disk attached to the broker. And by default, each segment contains one gigabyte of data or a week of data whichever limit is attained first. When the Kafka broker receives data for a partition, as the segment limit is reached, it will close the file and start a new one. And your write will always goes to the active segment. When it has re, um, reached or exceed the retention time limit, Kafka will eventually delete the closed segment. And um, I hope this quick summary will um, help you to understand how data lifecycle works in Kafka. So with that in mind, let's take a look how data lifecycle works in a MSK tier storage cluster. In this example, you have a topic with um, one partition and before you enable tier storage for this topic, there are three log segments. One of the log segment is active and others are closed. After you enable tier storage for this topic with uh, two days um, local retention and five days overall retention, um, Apache Kafka copies log segment one and two to the tier storage. Apache Kafka also retains the primary storage um, copy for uh, segment one and two. 
and the active segment 3 is not eligible to copy over to TR storage yet. In this timeline, none of the retention settings are applied yet for any of the messages in segment 1 and segment 2. And after two days, primary retention settings um, take effect for uh, segment 1 and segment 2 um, that Apache Kafka copies to TR storage. So segment 1 and 2 now expires from the local storage. Active segment 3 is uh, neither eligible for expiration nor eligible to copy over the uh, TR storage yet as it is an active segment. And after 5 days, overall retention setting take effect. Uh, Kafka clears log segment 1 and 2 from TR storage and segment 3 is neither eligible for expiration nor eligible to copy over to TR storage yet because it is an active segment. And that's how, how, how data lifecycle works on a tier storage enable cluster. Now, how about when you are reading data from tier storage? For any fetch request or read request, Replica Manager, a component of Kafka, will proceed with making a call to read from local log. And if it returns offset out of range exception, uh, it will delegate the read call to Remote Log Manager to read from tier storage. Kafka depends on operating system page cache for read and write. For remote read, the uh, remote storage component uses in-memory cache to sequentially uh, preface the segment part to serve from local in-memory cache. And that's why when your application starts reading data from tier storage, you can expect latency that is similar to the local storage tier, um, except an increased read latency for the first few bytes only. I hope this will help you to understand how MSKTR storage works. In summary, with MSKTR storage, there is zero infrastructure management for tier storage. You get virtually unlimited storage. The feature is fully compatible with um, Apache Kafka Consumer API, Streams API, and connectors. It will provide you similar read latency while reading from tier storage. And in terms of cost, you pay for the amount of data that you store and the amount of data that you retrieve. And this feature is compatible with the API introduced in KEEP 405. And that brings us end of our presentation. If you want to learn more, check our documentation and blog post. Uh, thank you all for your attention today. I hope that you found the talk informative and valuable. If you have any questions, comments or feedback, please reach out to us. Have a great day all.